so what does the crossing over uh, metaphor, uh, what does this language uh, connote? Well, there are sides, there's a barrier, there's little overlap, there's us and them, the established discipline or field, philosophy, analytic philosophy, the big leagues, and the dirty, messy, applied world of bioethics. Uh, these are talked about almost in mutually exclusive uh, disjunctive terms um, and I say maybe mutually uh, detrimental dysfunctional terms uh, because it seems to me much of the very interesting work is the work that does cross over, uh, that engages across disciplines and I think that is part of the reason uh, many of you uh, have engaged in bioethics. Uh, whether you're philosophers or physicians or psychiatrists or sociologists or anthropologists and so on. Uh, but, but this is my view. Uh, the new uh, academics almost universally and, and reflexively, maybe even with repugnance, uh, respond that there's something illegitimate about the new and the different. Uh, I think, I will tell you, I think this is sort of hardwired and we humans, uh, but who knows. Um, and that those of us who cross over to them are also somehow illegitimate. So if you followed Game of Thrones, you know Jon Snow is the bastard son mm. of Ned Stark, and he's a critical character in this Game of Thrones, uh, but a bastard son nonetheless. Okay, and this is Jon Snow, and, and you don't need to gaze on his uh, beautiful countenance. Okay. But at least it's my view, that in venturing beyond the wall, um, people like Stewart did this actually because he was, had a home discipline of psychiatry. Um, you know, in North America at least, in the U.S. and Canada for sure, uh, as of 2002, a colleague and I, uh, Les Rothenberg, uh, for ASBH, did a little study, a little survey, and we saw that 47 institutions offered 108 programs, uh, 63 masters, 19 PhDs, 13 fellowships, 11 certificates, and then two uh, of, of other, uh, like the clinical doctorate at, at Duquesne, um, that were either specializations in bioethics within a traditional department, or actually um, departments of bioethics or centers that could give degrees through, a, through say, a, a graduate college. Uh, this is interesting because it looks like the new and the different is moving toward a sort of institutionalization in academe. I would say roughly, very roughly, a track of professionalization, roughly. Um, more current data is kept, uh, Canadian Bioethics Student Association actually uh, tracks this, you can, you can see online. Um, my view is that when we cross over, we do not cross over without our bags. We carry quite a bit of baggage. Um, and I had the experience when I first started going to ASBH meetings, they weren't ASBH, it was Society for Bioethics Consultation, an antecedent predecessor organization to ASBH. Um, that I made a mistake. You might, you might tell what is ASBH. American Society for Bioethics and Humanities. Um, but early on, I made a mistake as someone trained in academic analytic philosophy. I would go to a talk by a psychiatrist, uh, by a lawyer, by a whatever, and I would think, this is crap. This isn't very good. Mm -hmm. And I would just slice it to pieces because that's what we analytic philosophers do. We cut, cut, yeah. cut, cut, cut. cut and we create this artificial diced up world, right? Well, I realized after a time that I was making a horrible mistake. My mistake was thinking that these people were playing the game I was taught to play. And it was a little bit like going to a soccer game and saying, but there weren't any home runs. There weren't any uh, triples. Well, you don't expect a home run, a baseball home run, at a soccer game. If you do, the joke is on you, not on them. 
So part of what you must learn is what game they are playing. And you need to learn their rules a bit. And if you do this, you can learn a lot, a lot, and play maybe a better game that can engage their game, okay? Um, Stuart remembers in our department that we had a debate, you may not remember, I think you do, that, uh, about whether a bioethics publication should count for promotion and tenure. And we had one person who was very adamant that they really shouldn't count very much. He's no longer in our department. Um, <laughs> But what we finally as a department agreed, by the way, our center became a department, right? This is part of the progression too, is that if we didn't have an explicit agreement, it was tacit. And Stuart and I actually had this conversation, you may remember. Well, whatever we think, if we think that bioethics publication shouldn't count, say Hastings Center, uh, a job, whatever, right? Then we better keep it a secret. Because what are we saying about bioethics? And you even said that. Gee, what are we saying about bioethics then? So, but I think now we don't even, it's not, of course they count, right? But at that time, this was early on, 2001, 2002, maybe we were less sure, and certainly we were. There's also this whole thing of, well, you can't have a degree in what? In bioethics. What's your home discipline? What's your methodology? Bioethics isn't a field. Bioethics isn't a discipline. Bioethics isn't a... And this is what the traditional analytic philosopher in me wants to say. But you hear it from the anthropologist. You hear it from the sociologist. You hear it from the physician. You hear it from the uh, doctor of jurisprudence. The same stories, right? Well, I'm skeptical of this. Anyway, this was given voice in what I call the Zeke critique which is Ezekiel Emanuel at one of our uh, ASBH meetings in 2009. And uh, he argued, at least on my interpretation, that bioethics is not a field or a discipline. You shouldn't get a degree in bioethics. And what you really should do is something valuable, which on my take is learn empirical methodology or some empirical methodology, or maybe even some empirical methodology in some real discipline or field, which is empirical. Uh, this was my take. Uh, Art Kaplan didn't like this. Uh, lots of us didn't like it. Um, and for once, maybe on a debate, I line up with Art Kaplan on this issue. OK. Now, is bioethics a discipline? Part of me says, who cares? Why should we care? Um, well, people care. So academics care. And you can find a literature that says yes, right? Callahan as early as 73, yes, it's a discipline, it's a discipline. Al Johnson, a discipline. And then he does his um, history, short history of medical ethics, birth of bioethics. And if you go and you look, in my opinion, you can see that Johnson had in mind certain criteria that he thought constituted a discipline. And he wanted to show that bioethics was a discipline. So he's going to put out the holy text, the, the important knowledge, the types of methodology, the purposes for which it's done, and so on. Others say, well, no, no, bioethics is not a discipline. It's a hybrid. It's public discourse. It's second order. It's multi and interdisciplinary, not disciplinary, you know, uh, hallowed, holy disciplinary language. Um, you see where I fall on this. So let's take one real quick and dirty view of what constitutes a discipline. This is uh, Loretta Koppelman. To take just one pass, disciplines have, quote, methods, competency standards, duties, honored text and core curriculum, and a necessary condition, unique expertise. The latter, and you hear this a lot in this literature, you see it in this literature, is typically said to include a discrete body of knowledge and a unified methodology. Right. Really? Yeah, exactly. I, this is my reaction to, really? Philosophy has a discrete body of knowledge and a unified methodology? Since when? Now, we're on the continent. So surely you don't see the unity between typical continental approaches and Western analytic. Good God, we speak a different language, right? Well, OK, how about medicine? Maybe, but go back in the history of medicine. Is it an art? Is it a science? How about the physician as healer? The physician as 
holy man, shaman, witch doctor, the Pythagorean tradition, right? The tradition of Hippocrates.